Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. Today, we're going to talk about COVID booster shots. The Biden administration recently came out with an announcement recommending that all adults get a COVID booster shot. I know I was a bit surprised by this news since it really came on the heels of them recommending a booster shot for people that are immunocompromised. Let's dig into the data behind this recommendation. So who is the booster for? This booster recommendation is for all adults with a normal immune system that have received a complete two-shot series with the mRNA vaccines, either Pfizer or Moderna. Eight months after you get your second dose of the mRNA vaccine, it's recommended that you get another dose of the same brand of the mRNA vaccine. For example, my second shot of the Pfizer vaccine was given on January 11th, so I could get my booster shot eight months later on September 11th. But in reality, supposedly the booster shots will be available starting September 20th. So what about the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? Well, since the one shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine was approved later, we don't have enough data yet to know if a booster is going to be needed. But my guess is yes, and the question will be if the recommendation will be for another J&J &J vaccine, or if after getting a J&J &J vaccine, experts will recommend that people get a booster with an mRNA vaccine. Time will tell on this. Will the booster shot be exactly the same as the previous two shots? I haven't heard a straight answer on this. Because the mRNA vaccine platforms are able to make changes easily to the vaccine, I could see manufacturers making minor tweaks to the vaccine based on variants that are circulating now. But I know that if they change the content of the booster shots, that could complicate distribution significantly. So what's the data behind this recommendation? One study is based on data from the New York Health Department that studied COVID-19 data from May 3rd through July 25th in the state of New York. By July 25th, over 10 million New Yorkers, or about 66%, were vaccinated. About 50% of these received Pfizer, 40% received Moderna, and about 10% received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. During the study period, a total of 9,600 new cases of COVID occurred among fully vaccinated adults, compared with over 38,000 among unvaccinated adults. Age didn't seem to matter, as the rate between the ages was about the same. And overall, during this time frame, the vaccine effectiveness against infection declined from 91% to about 80%. And this data combines all three vaccines. They didn't split the data out for one specific vaccine over another, which I think would have been really interesting. Then they looked at COVID hospitalization data for those that were vaccinated versus those that that were not vaccinated. A total of over 1,200 hospitalizations occurred among fully vaccinated adults compared with over 7,300 hospitalizations for COVID among unvaccinated adults. And the good news about this is that overall, the vaccine effectiveness against hospitalization seemed stable, ranging from 92 to 95% based on age. And one line from this paper made me so happy to read, it said, quote, data were too sparse to reliably estimate vaccine efficacy for COVID-19 related deaths. What a wonderful problem to have. Furthermore, the CDC has collected data from nursing homes and found that two doses of the mRNA vaccine were about 75% effective against infection among nursing home residents early in the vaccination program from March through May, 2021. But during June through July 2021, when the Delta variant circulation predominated, effectiveness declined to about 53%. And all of this data is similar to data from Israel. Israel only used the Pfizer vaccine for its population, and they've seen a decline in the effectiveness of the Pfizer vaccine to prevent infection to 64%. But like the data from New York, they found the vaccine remained very effective in preventing hospitalizations and serious illness 93% of the time. So, can you get a lab test to see if you need a booster shot? My last video discussed using a blood test to see if your vaccine is working and the pitfalls associated with this. 
If you decide to go this route, you need to be sure that you're getting an ELISA test that shows antibodies against the spike protein. But even then, I'm not sure we know what level of antibodies are needed against the Delta variant and future variants. So I wouldn't encourage anyone to use an antibody test to determine if you need a booster or not, at least not at this point. Maybe that will become more reliable in the future. So why now? The general sense I have is that governmental agencies are trying to be proactive in their recommendations for these boosters. They're seeing a slow decline in the effectiveness of the vaccines in preventing symptomatic illness and know that vaccine rollouts of any kind take time to implement. Overall, I think a vaccine booster is perfectly safe, but I still struggle with using our stockpile to give people third shots when our brothers and sisters around the world are not able to provide high risk populations with the first dose. Mike Ryan, the World Health Organization's emergency director put it bluntly, quote, we're planning to hand out extra life jackets to people who already have life jackets while we're leaving other people to drown without a single life jacket, end quote. So will I take a booster shot? I guess I'll have to see what's happening around the world at the time and whether the booster is different from the shots I received earlier. I believe it's perfectly safe for me to take it, but morally I may hold off with the hopes that other nations around the world can get their needed supply. Although manufacturers have assured the public they can meet the demand. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below about this issue. Thanks for joining me.